This is Columbus, Indiana, a place you'll find the unexpected and the unforgettable. It's a small town with a big city attitude, and there's a lot to see and do here, from the arts to sports, to stunning gardens and parks, to the city's national treasure. Over 60 buildings and landscapes designed by some of the most noted and influential architects of the 20th century. There are six national historic landmarks of modern architecture here. Three churches, a private home, a public school, and a bank, all true American treasures of art. The city's internationally celebrated architecture also includes postmodern and contemporary design, spanning decades of growth in Columbus, where the goal in architecture is excellence. That same goal for excellence drives every aspect of city life. In 2006, Columbus won the America in Bloom Award for its well-designed and maintained gardens, parks, and green spaces, including 638 acres that make up 18 city parks. Columbus boasts a large installation of exciting public art. Spread throughout town, these works inspire the imagination and create an energetic and unique cityscape. This is also home to international business, a Fortune 500 world headquarters, and three higher education institutions. There's a diverse population here with a strong economy and a skilled workforce. Located near several large metropolitan cities, Columbus sits at the crossroads of national transportation. The story of how this city came to be home to a national treasure of modern and contemporary architecture reveals the power of this community's desire for excellence. The desire that has shaped a vibrant, inspirational, can-do culture. In the early 1940s, a radically new kind of architecture came to this city. A local congregation was building a new church and wanted a contemporary design instead of a traditional one. They offered the project to architect Elio Saarinen, a recent immigrant from Finland. Saarinen initially declined the job in Columbus until one of the parishioners, J. Irwin Miller, asked for a chance to talk to him. Miller won over Saarinen with his argument that the congregation was seeking an architect who could find the right expression for their desire to live a rich inner life and a simple outer life. The first Christian church completed in 1942 was the first contemporary building in Columbus and one of the first modern churches anywhere in America. It is the oldest of the six national historic landmarks in the city, and it's one of the most beloved buildings in Columbus. In the 1950s, the population of Columbus was expanding with the post-war boom. The city needed new schools. Again, J. Irwin Miller stepped in. He encouraged the city to find modern architects to design the schools. Exciting city architecture, he thought, would help Columbus be seen as a forward-thinking community, one that would attract businesses and top-level managers looking for opportunity. And hiring architects with ideas that required new construction methods and materials would help the city reach its goal, to build with quality. To finance the schools and afford the architects' fees, Miller proposed the creation of a public-private partnership for the first new school, the Lillian C. Schmidt Elementary. His plan was this. His company's foundation, the Cummins Engine Foundation, would donate the design fees if the school board would agree to choose an architect from a list prepared by the foundation. Costs for construction would come from the school corporation and the school board would supervise the projects. After the first school was successfully built through that partnership, the school board asked if the Cummins Engine Foundation would contribute the design fees for other schools. They did. And what came to be known as the Architecture Program was born. With that program in place, modern and contemporary architects saw Columbus as a city that welcomed their bold ideas. By the 60s, the national press and architecture critics had noticed the innovative designs of Columbus. Important architects of the day began to lobby for projects here. The city attracted the great talents of I.M. Pei, Eero Saarinen, Richard Meyer, Robert Stern, 
Kevin Roach, Harry Weiss, John Warnicke, Robert Venturi, and Gunnar Burkerts, to name but a few. The Cummins Engine Foundation's architecture program expanded over time to support other buildings, including the regional hospital. The foundation helped bring public art to the city as well as landscape and streetscape projects. Private citizens and businesses also chose innovative architects when building homes and churches, offices, and factories. Each architect who has designed here has helped create this community of remarkable buildings. Columbus has been ranked sixth for innovation of design by the American Institute of Architects, putting it in league with Chicago, New York, San Francisco, Boston, and Washington, D.C. When commenting on the value of the architecture program he started, Miller said that what is built reflects what a city thinks of itself and what it aims to be. I think the buildings that we are move around in have an enormous influence on us. The better the building serves its purpose, the longer it'll last before you have to tear it down. And I think it's a, a, a mediocrity is expensive because you may have to build three inadequate buildings in the same period of time that one good one would last. What's great about Columbus and I don't see it anywhere else, you know, in any other city, um, is underlying all of the sort of architecture um, is a kind of continual return to um, a reimagining of the future. It, you can look at it historically, you know, as a series of buildings done over time, but, but what makes them all interesting is the fact that those series of buildings done over a period of time, we're all thinking about the future. Underneath it all is this incredible sort of optimism. Adding to the impact of the exceptional architecture in Columbus are landscape designs that have garnered countless prestigious awards. The successful marriage of buildings and landscapes here make the city a visual delight. The early designs of renowned landscape architects Dan Kiley, Henry Phillips, and Jack Curtis were the benchmarks for quality and beauty in Columbus. Dan Kiley's talents made many contributions to Columbus. Among his works are the stunning grounds of the North Christian Church, the majestic setting of the First Baptist Church, and the innovative environments of many of the Irwin Union Bank properties. The design of special landscapes has continued in Columbus. One is the award-winning Mill Race Park by Michael Van Valkenburg, an innovative use of distressed land. The design reclaimed 86 acres of marginal value floodplain next to the White River and turned it into a beautiful downtown park of open spaces and curving vistas that provide a gathering place for outdoor activities, concerts, and quiet moments. The great thing about Mill Race is that it shows a community taking a piece of land that might have been thought of as not useful and making something fantastic there. There was this amazing way that the park was built. This was not a traditional building process where a contractor was hired and built the whole thing, but a civilian youth corps through a federal program did a great deal of the work on the project. Many of the contractors in Columbus um, did the work at cost. Mill Race was a grassroots effort that showed the uh, extent to which design is a broadly valued thing in this community. There is a tree beyond this world And it sanctuaries your roots, a song is cool I am the fool whose life's been spent between what said and what is meant. The activities calendar here is chocked full of music and street festivals. <laughs> the
The Columbus Philharmonic and the Columbus Symphony offer yearly seasons of performances. And recreational and sporting events take advantage of top-rated facilities in town. Golfers enjoy the links of the Robert Trent Jones designed course at Otter Creek, ranked 31st of America's 100 greatest golf courses by Golf Digest. The 19 mile paved people trail that runs the length of the city beckons walkers and bikers of all ages. It's not only an exercise trail, but also a nature path that winds past beautiful southern Indiana scenery. Families find lots of activities at Kids Commons, a 12,000 square foot children's museum. There's a climbing wall, the body bubble, a giant toilet slide, and lots of games that teach about the world. Kids Commons also serves as a special place for parties and celebrations. Columbus has numerous playgrounds in its city parks. The newest is Freedom Field, designed as an all-inclusive playground with accessibility for all children and adults, including those with special needs. For indoor fun, summer or winter, there's the ice arena at the Hamilton Center, where skaters practice their figures or just glide and spin. Downtown is the heart of the city. Locally owned stores and boutiques offer shoppers specialty items for unique gifts or for that one-of-a-kind purchase for the home. The works of local artists are available in downtown stores, along with distinctive crafts and furniture. A well-stocked bookstore and a Cook's Gourmet shop spice up the downtown shopping experience. Locally owned restaurants serve up fine fare for lunch or dinner. and city hotels offer sophisticated and convenient accommodations. Nearby, just off Interstate 65, is the Edinburgh Premium Outlet Mall, a giant outlet complex that draws shoppers of all ages for a day or for a weekend of bargain hunting in top name brand stores. At Edinburgh, there's always a sale going on. Columbus is a forward-thinking community with an exciting vision of the future. This city of unexpected sights and pleasures is a destination to visit over and over again. Each time, there is a promise of discovering something new and enjoyable. The time you spend in Columbus will truly be unforgettable.